Okay. Uh. You ready? If you feel you, it's, uh, Benjamin Ross. A little, a little hesitant, hesitant there. Well, we're doing two bakers, and yes. I mean two bookers, bakers, yeah, yeah. candlestick makers. Uh, we're doing. <laughs> you didn't like that, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, Jackson came up with a joke yesterday on his own. That's his kid, Jack. Yeah, he said, "Why uh, is this really how we're Why were the basketball players?" Uh, don't do this. Kept to me. really don't, cool. Don't do this to me. During the game. Don't make me hate a child. <laughs> Why? During the game, where they kept really cool. You're making me hate a child. Because of all the fans. <laughs> That's good. He made it. <laughs> From this, like uh, I'm getting like that little. <laughs> The circle Mac ball. <laughs> Chad, Chad play Hello Darkness, my old friend. <laughs> As I look up into the distance. Hello Darkness, my, my old friend. friend. <laughs> uh, okay, so remember, um, Booker's is one of the original runs of the small batch exclusive. What happened was Makers came out when all of the bourbon industry was trying a race to the bottom common, lowest common denominator right. to compete with vodka in the 80s, right. Maker's Mark came in and said, screw that, we're expensive because we're good. Yes. And so, not long after that, 60, almost 63% alcohol. Yeah, good not Lord. long after that, the, the Jim Beam family, the, no, the Booker and the Freds, uh, they came out with a small batch uh, series. And in that small batch series, you know you've got Bakers, Bookers, uh, Knob, and so on. Yeah. Right? Now, in the ver very early days of that, uh, you had, by the way, we're doing two variations of this. So Bookers, what it is, is selecting small variations. You work on that one, I'll work on this one. Selecting small variations, picking hand-selecting barrels, blending them together for special editions of Bookers. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I get... I get that now, huh? I get Finley bits. <laughs> Thought those were yours. Um, so each new Booker's is a new addition. So we're gonna pour one into each glass. So you have 2017-03, I have 2018-01. Here, keep those glasses where they are because otherwise I have no idea. Let's see if we can tell the difference between them first. You ready? Mmm, that's super caramel. Mm. Oh! Caramel and dusty, oh. dusty oak on the nose. They're different. I mean, they're not dramatically different. If you like Booker's, you'll love both of these. But there's a good 10-15% difference in those two. I'm getting dusty oak on this, I'm getting Spice. peanut on this, on the nose. Yeah. Did you already sip? Yeah. But I also agree that, uh, and it is, it's like salted peanuts, like when you get in the can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That one's all, uh, they're both hot, right? 63%. Right. You're going to be hot. But this one's a little more clingy sweet. Mm hmm And this one has more of the barrel spice to it. Clingy, that is sweet. Yeah, that is right? sweet. Yeah, I see Isn't that cool? Now, before I go further, this is from Benjamin Ross, the patron saint. Benjamin Ross, the patron saint of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it classy. Uh, now, I will say, there's been a lot of patron saints, uh, or people have commented, there's been a lot of patron saints yeah. recently. Yeah. But here's the thing. When a patron saint becomes a patron saint, they have to send in at least seven whiskeys. So, of course, there's going to be a lot back-to-back -back <laughs> of the same patron saints. I'm trying to cycle through them and select ones that everybody can get. Sure. Right? Uh, question. You were saying things. Mm-hmm earlier about how these are different yes. in terms of how they're made. Yes. What did you say? They're selecting different barrels from the warehouse. All right, fine. That's all I needed. Why? Because you went out for like five minutes. But no, it's no, no. really just they were selecting different barrels from the warehouse. No, so each time, and they give you the full percentages. Oh. I mean, here's how serious this is. Right. The uh, one right here, this oh, is the so 2017 they, they mix different barrels from the website. Yeah, so the they warehouse. do a run where they combine, in this case, 
Uh, well, it's percentages. So 8% came from the 8th floor of Warehouse D, 14 from the 7th floor of Warehouse D, 37% from the 4th floor of Warehouse E, 5% from the 5th floor of Warehouse E, yeah, so 16 E, 20 that's F, that's 6 4. That's, that's how I'm detailed. I'm not going to give you the second so one. So glad you read every Now, they named this one uh, the back porch or front porch whiskey. It's front porch, I think. Yeah, front porch batch. And it was just in honor of Booker, who used to sit on his front porch. At the end of the day, he viewed bourbon as just, as much as you want to nerd out on it, it's just something to enjoy at so the end of a long day Booker's, on the front porch. There's Booker's and there's Baker's, mm -hmm. right? And yep. they're somehow related. Yep. Okay. Well, they're all part of the Jim Beam series. Fine. Of the small batch. Which stuff. one was considered a little bit more high end than the other? Bookers or Bakers? Uh, I think people consider Bookers to be a little bit more high end than the. Okay. But I think because I remember liking both. Yeah, me too. Now this is something that begs to have a little little dosey dose of water there. A little dosey dose. You got a little dosey dose. Got any water? We got some tepid water over here. Uh, this remember their small batch series also includes Basil Hayden. Do you not have? Uh, no, that's all I have. That's the that's the uh, watering down uh, water right here. No uh, one's drinking out of this. You want to do it in both? We'll just do just do this one. Oh man! Now took well, it down to twenty. 60. Took it down to twenty percent. I did not take it down to twenty. There's just more water I than whiskey. I took it down now. to fifty, maybe fifty-five. Dude, no, not even close. Okay, so this one I was actually kind of like, oh, whoa, whoa! I just got that tea. I got that black tea note on the nose. Dude, it's just nothing but sweet now because it's twenty percent whiskey. It's not twenty percent whiskey. Smell that and think black tea. I'm liking it. Yeah. Yeah, I just got that same kind of. Sweet English black tea, like with milk and sugar. Now in to it. make it a true fifty percent, you gotta overcompensate. You are not. You're not. You're, you so are not good at accurately predicting levels of water and whiskey. Oh, yeah. You're just looking for an excuse to pour yourself more whiskey. What are you talking about? I'm not a mood. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. So the second one before you go on, I'm kind of I kind of dig this because this one is actually named after Kathleen De Benedetto. Divinity. Yes, this is the Kathleen edition. Who is right? Kathleen Benedetto? She was, when they launched the exclusive small batch series for Jim Beam, Knob Creek, Basil Hayden, Baker's Bookers, she was the first rep oh. to start repping expensive whiskey in a market yeah. where people were not currently used to paying a lot of money for yes. bourbon. Yeah. And she successfully ushered it into an era where it was considered normal to uh, pursue highly sought after expensive bourbons. Just imagine. That's impressive. I imagine her every conversation being the reaction squirrel. He <laughs> <laughs> goes, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Yeah, it's 40, it's $48. And they're like, what, but I can get that thing for $18. It's like, no, it's good. It's better really. Just give me your money and trust me. <laughs> Nick Gondarian, first off, thanks for choosing one of my questions, sticking to the summer theme. Mm. I'm heading back to the beach for much of my summer, where I love to invest time reading books I never have time for. Daniel. Mm. Do you recommend any good books regarding the history of whiskey or bourbon or regional whiskey, etc.? As a psalm, I assume you have some go-to books to use as reference to inform all of your which just I'm gonna give you three. Hold on, and then he drew a, a drawing of him giving you a hand job here. Yeah. All of your brilliant I'm stories you and explanations of history. Rex, I don't think Mooch books exist yet, but that could very well be your next project. Yeah, it could. I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, uh, check out the Beach people. books on history, check out the Cowdery books on bourbon, check out the Minnick books on the history of whiskey, check out High West's book, the, uh, one of the founders of High West who wrote a book on the history of whiskey in the West. Mm -hmm. Those are just a start. Right. Again, I think the water is still too much on this, Daniel. Taste, <laughs> taste, taste that. Dude. Taste that. It's just nothing but sweet now. We have to... No, it's not. It's just nothing but sweet. That's, dude, you were used to a 60%, and you're trying to make that taste like a 60% again, which totally defeats the purpose of adding water. I'm just trying to give a fair Good amount of God, water. Good God, man. Just a fair I'm, amount of... You are, you are not getting these anymore. <laughs> you are no longer allowed. I prefer Kathleen's batch. 
because it's a little more spicy. There we go. I'm starting to get it back now. Because <sighs> you pulled you put it in half a bottle. I did not pour in half a half bottle. Half a damn bottle. You are blind. Steven Reynolds, so <laughs> what do you guys think? Hey, Reynolds. Hey, Reynolds. Do you not talk enough in this show? Yeah. Hey, Reynolds. So what do you guys think of stories like Aldi and... Stores. Stores. Like Aldi, well, I don't know if this is, that, Aldi and Lou. Well, they're making their own blends of whiskey. Aldi is an international grocery chain right. that has sourced their own blend of whiskey and it recently won Best Whiskey in they the World. They are surprisingly winning relevant awards and yep. super budget, just wondering how legit these awards are or if they are getting it right. Think of it like the Kirkland's bourbon. So, right? it's easy to laugh at a lot of those brands until you try them. It's like, oh damn. Yeah, a lot of them is, are good. When you're playing around with that kind of money, yeah. and you can go straight to the top on people who can produce the largest quantity of things, right? Uh, you're bound to end up with, at minimum, a decent whiskey. Right, so here's the thing. Because store brands from like your little local grocery store. Like a Trader Joe's or something. Right, or even like a, like a state chain. Okay, right. like a Specs run. But they don't have them, by the way. Like, like a state chain of like little stores, the in-store brand is probably going to be, yeah, maybe iffy. But whenever it's like a national or even an international company, yeah. to your point, they can get anything from anywhere and they have amazing amounts of leverage. So the only reason it would suck is if the person who's supposed to be sourcing their own in-house brand doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, if they were just looking at spreadsheets and budgets instead of actually hiring people to taste the whiskey and come up with a plan. That makes sense to me, why all that would be good. I haven't actually tried their whiskey, but... Did you do water on that? Uh, nope, because I'm a man. I don't need to water... Oh, man. <laughs> you know what? Hang on. Yeah, there you go. Here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. You misspelled dude. If you fight, <laughs> may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.